Hey everybody, welcome back to our little magical farm here on the west coast. I have some good news and bad news. The good news is that, let's see, let's get out of this and I think we have, I see, there we go. The good news is that I have already figured out a few things that will make this episode a little bit smoother for you guys. The bad news is that <laughs> this is the second time that I have recorded this episode and I need to get it done that I can get it out to you guys tomorrow. So I'm, I'm just not feeling as fresh. I am going on my third cup of coffee and there is no vinegar in my coffee this time. So you guys do have that going for you. However, it's just a little bit frustrating. I don't know what happened. I had everything set up to record, but it recorded Windows Explorer for half of my episode, despite me, you know, I don't know, I like I have a little preview video showing what I am actually recording. And for some reason, the preview video showed the game, but I recorded, you know, a file explorer in Windows for the entire episode. For, well, for half the episode, even though the window showing what I was actually recording was correct in the bottom. So I, I don't know what happened there with OBS, but it happened. And, you know, sometimes things just happen and you got to... You gotta make the best of it. Right now, we are going to refill our tractor, then we have to refill the cedar. I will tell you what I did in the episode that you're not gonna see, which is unfortunate. So basically, we filled up our sheep pen with sheep. We have up to, let's see, where are, well, let's look at finances first. Right now, we are maxed out again with the loan. We have $32,000, we are $600,000 in debt. And we have, well, let's uh, look at animals. We have our sheep right there at 42. And in case you didn't know or weren't paying attention to the comments on the previous video, basically we decided that we would buy sheep in the summer even though they are at the maximum price. Let's uh, pull up the sheep price here. They're at the maximum price right now, but this is the, also the time when they produce the most wool. So it's kind of a trade-off if... If I would have bought them at the lowest price in the fall, then I don't get any wool until next year in the spring. And basically, I'm just feeding them for nothing. So at least now, yes, they're a little bit more expensive, but I get wool. That is what we're going to do. Are we full? It kind of sounds like we are full. Let's turn off our little uh, thing there. Wait, what? Is, oh, does that show the level right there? Well, that's pretty cool. Or is that the, what is that? We only have 109. Le yeah, that showed the level. I was not aware of that. Let's uh, try to back up on our tracks and let's see this is gonna we should probably just turn around here let's just turn around this this little thing won't cause too much terrible compaction we also need to fill us up with seed because we are out of seed with that thing so that is something that we're gonna have to let's see how are we gonna do that we can go back home to do we drive the tractor back to the farm or should we Let's see, what are we gonna do? Should we drive the tractor back to the farm or are we going to drive out many? I think we only have two more things of seed. I think perhaps we will, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. But I do know, oh yeah, so <laughs> in case you missed it, I, yeah, I forget. I talked about this extensively in my other video. I have a G29 now, a Logitech G29 steering wheel instead of my SciTech heavy equipment wheel. And that is based on, if you weren't listening to the previous episodes, I've been having a lot of problems with my heavy equipment wheel. And well, <laughs> I just decided that one way to figure out whether or not it's a hardware or software problem is to buy new hardware. And so that's what I did, largely based on the recommendation of Jonathan Mayberry. So thank you for that, because I am loving this wheel. I'll talk more about the wheel in a little bit. But first, I mean, I guess it does not conclusively say that I am having hardware problems with my old wheel. It could easily be driver problems or some type of other software conflict with that wheel, because it worked for a little bit and then it didn't work. I don't think it's a hardware problem with the cable. I plugged the cable in and I had the, the console open where I was testing the all the different points of that wheel and what I was wiggling the, the cable, checking for breaks in the cable the entire time, you know, to, to maybe cause that intermittent connection disconnection. And I don't think it's a problem with the cable. So I do not think that that was part of the problem, but I do think that the problem, why do I have lights on still? This is always a problem with this Land Rover. Oh wait, now the lights are off. Interesting. 
Okay, well, um, I wasn't imagining that, right? I mean, you guys saw that. Anyway, so let's look at... I, I brought down Fritz with a trailer full of bales, so you guys missed that. I You missed loading my brother, dropping off the sheep, and then we fed the sheep full of... Um, that straw of hay and we do need a little bit water in there, but they will last for now And in the time being let's look at our let's see we have two pallets of straw. I think that let's see What are we gonna do? Uh, I let's bring Fred no Let's take that no um, <laughs> I don't know what to do Let's let's just bring Frederick home. Let's just bring Frederick home I think that'll be the easiest thing to do. No. Yes. No. Well, Manny can is lighter. Um. Uh. Let's. Why is this decision so hard? Why is it so hard to figure out? I don't know what to do. Let's. Okay, let's bring Manny down there. Just because... Well, no, Manny's slower. Manny was slower. Okay, so we are going to drive Frederick home. That's what we're going to do. We're going to run and go get Frederick. All right, here we are back at home. We took the back roads home. It was just a little bit quicker. Well, not necessarily. It was actually longer. Traveling along the edge of the fields. But I thought that it was a little bit more fun. Let's park right here because we'll probably back Manny up from the... Or, I mean, we'll probably bring Manny up from the rear. I think that's probably the easiest thing to do. Anyway, other things that you guys missed was I complained about how every time, apparently, that you... All of my inputs and controls that I had saved for my side console... Well, apparently, when you start or configure a new wheel, it thinks that it's like... It, it basically pairs your wheel with the side console together. And it is a completely separate... Uh, save configuration file that you have to reprogram everything all over again. So not only did I have to reprogram my wheel, which was just a few buttons, but I had to reprogram my entire side console how I like it. And I'm still, things are a little bit different. I, I don't know what I was thinking or I, I think some things are better. You know how it is. And I, wait, did I have the hazards on with this? No, that was the hazards I saw in the background. Anyway, yeah, so I'm still getting a little bit used to this um, side console and controller, but the controller is great. I love this controller. I am so happy that I made the switch to the G29. If you can afford it, uh, a high quality wheel is amazing. I, oh man, the, the force feedback is, you know, I thought the force feedback with the springs were good, but it's just because I had never had a real wheel before. I didn't know the difference. I didn't know what a, what force feedback felt like and it is a humongous difference if you can afford a steering wheel like the g29 i cannot recommend something with force feedback enough i guess the exception would be i don't know if i had to recommend something i would have to say all you had was 250 bucks which is all this wheel was on amazon if that's all that you have I would have a hard time recommending this if you do not already have the side console. The side console makes such a huge difference when you are playing in game. Uh, I mean, it is it feels so much like you're driving a real tractor. But if you don't mind having well, trying to yeah, remember how I said I'm trying to remember those controls. If you don't mind having the, you know, having to adjust those things in game and use the keyboard and also the wheel. The, the great thing about the side console is I am almost, um, you know, it's almost like the Hotez system where your hands in, uh, what's that? Hands and throttle. Wow. Hands. hands on throttle and stick is what the, uh, what Hotez stands for. Yeah, so your hands are always on the throttle and stick. You know, like in real life, you don't have to be pressing extra buttons except for rare cases. And that's kind of how it was when I am playing. I, I use my keyboard a little bit, but Mostly it's the side console and the wheel. So I can have my left hand on the wheel and then my right hand over on the side console instead of, you know, trying to figure out where the buttons are on my keyboard. It's really hard to place your finger on, you know, like if I wanted to press the M key without looking at my keyboard, it'd be kind of hard. But if I want to press a certain button on the side console, it's a little bit easier because they're spread out and, you know, I pretty much know the layout of those. So that's a lot better 
I think, than having just a keyboard and steering wheel. But, so yeah, like I was saying, if you only have $200, I would have a hard time not recommending the heavy equipment wheel bundle because, well, I mean, let's look at the quality assurance level of it, for instance. If you look at the Amazon ratings and if you trust those at all, they have basically the same quality rating as the, well, as the G29 and a lot of other high quality, higher quality wheels. I, I would not necessarily say that that is totally indicative that of, of quality assurance, but it's got to count for something. They, you know, I, I think a lot of people, you hear a lot of horror stories, but not everybody talks about the highlights of a product that they have. Most of the time they go on forums to, oh, I got up on the shoulder a little bit. Most of the time they go on the forums to complain. And so let's discuss the highlights of the wheel. It's, it's a great wheel. It does feel cheap, but of course I only notice that cheapness now that I have a high quality or higher quality steering wheel. Of course you can buy a thousand dollar wheel combos and you know, wheel and pedal combos, but I think that I am happy with the version that I have. The, the steering wheel feels amazing. It feels like it, well, it's, like wrapped if I can move there and we're gonna go through a bush and yeah I'm still getting a little used to still getting a little used to things we'll just pretend that you didn't see that running into the wall it does ow <laughs> I am still getting used to this wheel don't blame me anyway I think that if you can stomach the bill obviously get a a, a good quality steering wheel and then of course get something like the SciTech side side panel but why aren't you lowering thought I had you on lower all right sorry about that little interruption my dogs were barking at a cat outside yeah if you what I was saying is on the other hand if you know what a good quality wheel feels like like for example now that I have played with the G29 I would have a very hard time going back and playing with just the SciTech heavy equipment wheel. So if you have ever played with a really good quality wheel before and you just don't have one now, you're looking for a, a, an upgrade or, I mean, if you're looking to buy one and you have had a high quality wheel before, I, I don't think, you know, if, if all you have is 250 bucks or However much the G29 costs and you can't afford the SciTech side panel on the side as well as the wheel, then I would probably recommend getting a good wheel because I think that this is awesome. And then afford the, the side panel when you get a chance. That's just because I think for people who have felt quality, they're gonna feel like they're missing something. But for me, since I didn't know any different, I, I was more than happy with the heavy equipment wheel bundle. I I loved that thing. That thing was awesome. But I don't know. It, it's a tough recommendation because I, I guess you just have to ask yourself, what do you want more of? Because I think the side console is such a huge deal. I would try to work that into your into your budget with whatever your plans are if you don't have it. It just makes it feel so much more real, but also I mean, if you haven't really operated the heavy equipment in real life or like a tractor, then you might not miss something like a side console and you don't mind using the keyboard for, for extra commands and stuff like that. So I don't know, it's, it's a tough, there's pluses and minuses to both sides. I think you just have to ask yourself, what do you want more of? Do you want a high quality wheel now and forego the side panel or do you want a you know do you want it all and then maybe have a little bit less of a quality steering wheel and when i say quality i mean the feeling the force feedback is amazing on the g29 it i it just feels so much more like a real wheel it's a little bit it's a lot stiffer it's not like a spring it it feels like a real steering wheel that's that's all i can say it's it's wrapped in leather so that makes it feel even more real the, the G29 just feels cheap and plasticky, but I still had a really good time with it, and it still does have a spring in the middle, so it's not like it has zero feedback. It's just not quite like this this uh, force feedback that we have here on on the G29, and it's it's just not as it's just not quite as smooth. 
And, uh, you know, obviously you get more spring the further you turn the wheel with the spring. With Ford's feedback, it's kind of constant all the way through. And that is basically, uh, well, I mean, that's that's a force feedback steering wheel. So got a few spots that my brother kind of missed there on the edges. I'm not going to go through and get all of them. That seems just a little bit excessive. It's, it's not that big of a deal. But we're going to go through here and let's fold up so we're more on the edge of the the field let's hop inside the cab it's just a little bit easier to drive oh well, really a lot easier to drive and i don't think i am let's see should i plant along the edge here where he missed i think i'm just gonna skip this little edge because it'll be a different growth stage and it's not that much of a distance so it'll just be a little bit extra space that we aren't planting this year i i mean that's kind of that kind of stinks it it caught us right at midnight when we were planting this field and i was stopped and i just said oh let's just skip it i mean that's kind of a shame in, in real life you actually you know you do want to plant a field and and finish it you know you don't want to plant it and then come back like three or four days later that's that's not what you want to do but where did i did i miss my i did i missed my turn off oh man all right we gotta back up a little bit here i think that yeah let's uh oh man i got a little bit a little bit crooked there let's just pull forward and back up anyway yeah in real life you you know the planting day actually does matter you want to be sure to plant the same field within the same day if not you know start it one day and finish it the next day because that does matter when you're drying out or when, when you're looking at harvesting and you know i mean like this year in the fall for example we had the exact same hybrid planted but the fields were planted three or four days apart and you know this is obviously two different fields i'm talking about now but the fields were planted a couple days apart and we couldn't harvest we harvested one but we could not harvest the other one so i mean the, the days definitely matter but i i don't know i i wish that <laughs> there's just no i mean you have to draw the line somewhere with seasons so there's, there's really nothing else that they could do about that and still make it the product that they have let's, uh, all right let's get started back in the corner here this tractor is really hard backing up when you have no turning radius okay so let's look at what we are planting are we planting wheat here what else do we have planted on the rest of the land so fruit types we have barley barley wheat wheat so let's do barley again here and we'll just keep it barley after i don't know uh, we're gonna buy some more fields and then it is time to start looking at upgrading our planter i think that we don't need to upgrade the rest of our equipment if we can just afford to upgrade our planter let's uh no that's a little bit too crooked let's let's just let's just fix it let's get it right i think that yeah anyway i really would love to be able to update our planter to you know what we have that horse pack we could upgrade one of the planters over here on the west coast to the horse pack i really hate not having a turning radius i really hate not being able to turn it's like ugh, i i need to be able to kick it back I just can't turn it sharp enough. You you, almost, you have to think ahead too much with this tractor. There we go. That that should work. Okay, so let's get on the line there straight. And there we go. You almost... Yeah, you really need to like think ahead when turning this tractor because the turning radius is so bad. Maybe that's part of the more realistic mod. I don't know. Or the lack of the more realistic mod. It did seem to slip a little bit back there. And I didn't n really know why it was doing that, but this is really hard to drive from this point of view without... Let's see. Let's uh, drive as far as we can without hitting anything. And it really stinks having to use the keyboard when I just talked about using the side console. It's because my button isn't programmed for the side console, okay? Frederick really is nice to drive. You know, oh, this wheel feels so much like I'm driving a real tractor man i think that i think i don't know i take it back like if you really care about driving 
I think you gotta get a good wheel. I would say that the side console is less important and you can use the keyboard well enough. I think that the benefit of using a really good wheel, it just, it just outweighs, it just outweighs way too much. I don't know, that's, this is just amazing. All right, let's uh, try to cheat a little bit. And let's see, we are going to, we might as well leave enough space for one row there since that's, we're gonna have to come back and plant a row anyway based on the back there. Let's just lower right there. And how many more? Let's see. Is that enough to turn around? That's five end rows. I think that might be enough to turn around on. I don't know, guys. What do you think? I think that, well, the best thing to do is just plant. And how about we continue? Yeah, let's just continue around to the left. And we'll just plant a row and see what it feels like. All right, so we're going to back up here and <laughs> sorry about those camera controls. Yeah, and so this is part of the problem with the planter. Once you get it cranked to a certain side, there is no going back and, and fixing it because the, the tractor can't turn fast enough to, to correct it. So that's kind of a problem with the steering wheel, but... I think that, let's see, where are we starting from? We need to go back there a little bit more. And, you know, it's almost like this tractor is big enough that I should have a bigger planter on it. Because if you have a tractor with this bad of a turning radius, then I feel like you should be driving a planter that's a little bit also unwieldy, equally unwieldy to back up. And see, there, I think, see, that's kind of another indication. It... Well, it was a little bit too far in the hedgerow there. It kind of looked like we were... Let's see. Let's put up the marker. Actually, we want the marker up until we get past. It, it, it started to slip a little bit there going up the hill. I don't know if you saw that or not. Oops, wrong way. I don't know if you saw that or not, but it did start to slip going up the hill. And it... it, it it kind of made me think that it's like we don't have the moralistic mod active on this tractor. I don't know. It's kind of a tough thing. You know what? That is an awful hard corner to get. I'm really thinking about leaving... I'm really thinking about leaving this as grass in the future. That's a really hard thing to get. That's really hard. All right, I'm sorry. My dog's distracted me again, and I forget what I was talking about. Let's keep on going there and we're gonna finish getting this field done i think that i don't know i think that i perhaps should go into a cinematic at some point here and when should i start that cinematic i don't know i forget what i was talking about so maybe maybe now is as good a time as any to do that cinematic it's been a long time since i have done one and i do miss them let's let's uh yeah let's let's plan on that i think that'll be a great idea okay here we go so enter cinematic mode And welcome back, everybody, to, well, not welcome back to Farming Tube. Welcome back from the little time lapse. I don't know how that one was. I don't think it was as good as some of my other ones. But anyway, we are just about done here planting. And then, well, we're done planting. And probably also the end of the episode as well. This has been, it's, it's a little bit of... It's always a little bit of a letdown when you 
you know, I, I spend a lot of energy on these episodes, and it's not that I'm not having fun, it's not that it's fake energy, but it <laughs> takes a lot out of me. And it is always depressing to know that, you know, like, that feeling of like, man, I nailed it. Nailed it. That was an awesome episode. You know, I killed it. And then you find out that it didn't record for some reason or you had an audio problem. You just have to re-record everything. And then it's just a nightmare because, well, what did I say? What did I, I forget how much I talked about certain things or, you know, certain points I brought up about whether or not it's uh, what's going on in the map or with like my wheel for example and then you know stuff like uh, I, I, it's just it's hard to go back and try to I don't know because then you start to get the episodes confused like well did I talk about that this episode or is it last episode and you don't want to talk about something too much in case you already talked about it this episode of this recording but you know it's just uh it's just kind of frustrating, and I am sad. I was so excited for this episode, and then I got to editing, and it's like, oh, man, I... It was so frustrating, because, like, parts of it was good. I almost decided to just save it and cut around the parts where it was showing the file explorer, but it just... It wouldn't have been good, and it, there just wasn't enough continuity, or, well, there wasn't really enough footage to do that. So, unfortunately... I don't know what happened. I've never seen that problem before, that specific problem, but that was definitely frustrating. But let's uh, get out of GPS there. And yeah, anyway, I think that that will just about conclude this episode. We will probably end, well, have you guys seen the sheep at all? I don't think you have. We'll probably end with taking Frederick home and then I will say my goodbyes down at the sheep farm. It is pretty nice. Anyway, let's actually bring Frederick up here and we are folding on up because I want to take a look at, let's get off GPS. I want to take a look at up here because let's see. Oh yeah, that's right. Maybe we should say our goodbyes up here. Uh, no, I, I just wanted to take a look at... It will take quite a bit of work to take out that hedgerow. If I have some extra time, I think that... Actually, you know what? I will have some extra time this spring to maybe take out the hedgerow. But I don't think I'll have enough time to plant it. But maybe I can spend my time, you know, ripping it up and spreading manure on it. Getting ready for next season. I think that'll be good. And then we already looked at taking out a couple of fence rows down there once we buy those fields. And yeah, I think that's the plan for now. So here we have the sheep. We're just going to put the rest of this. Let's see. We're going to, if I can remember what buttons are what. We're going to put the rest of the hay away. And then I'll probably top off their water while I'm at it. So the hay we are keeping in here here for now and let's see i think i think i might as well just keep the uh those forks on there and we will lower there we go uh that's not gonna work out very well let's disconnect and just back up a little bit there we go uh, i didn't quite have them lowered all the way didn't quite have them lowered all the way originally but that'll work and I think that, you know what, here's what we're going to do. I think let's move Billy because I want to put my weight right there. I think that'll be easy for getting lined up, ready to, ready to get into that shed whenever we need the weight. Let's uh, bring Billy on over here. And there we go. So... I, you know what, we should actually probably put that in a shed there. I'm not sure. We don't really need Billy up at the other farm at the moment. Let's uh, make sure that we're not hitting anything. And there we go. I think this will be perfect if I leave the weight right here. Because it's kind of a, you know, it's like a spot where I can back into and then go straight forward into there, into that shed to, to get the, the rest of the whatever I'm trying to say, to get the rest of the, to get lined up good enough for the hay bales. That's what I was trying to say. Let's get over here. We're trying to get lined up so that we can just top off the water for the sheep. I think that'll be good for them. 
All right, Heidi. There you go, girl. And let's hook you up. And then we will. Which button is... Yeah, there we go. We are filling, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it might help if I do that. All right, I think we can turn you off. You don't need a pump to do that. But let's, uh, let's make sure our sheep are in good supply. I think we already looked at this once. Yeah, so our sheep are good. They're producing wool. And it'll take a little while to get the productivity up. If you remember the... It, it's like an average. They, they average it out with the way that they changed it for this version of Seasons. And wait, was that a future version? No, I think it's, it's this version of Seasons. Anyway, the... Oh, why is the... They have all the food. Why isn't their productivity going up? That's interesting. I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, look at the... Let's, here we go. Here's a little talking post here. Anyway, I wanted to say, the, the only thing I didn't really talk about is the 1x versus 5x speed. I kind of like the 1x speed. It, it allows me to move along at the pace I like with enjoying the sunsets and the sunrises and the days that I like to enjoy. I, I really hate having the five minute sunsets. And, you know, it's, yeah, it, it doesn't have quite the same pressure playing at 1x speed and then fast forwarding whenever you need to. But it does allow me to feel more realistic where when... I, you know, like in real life, the harvest time is really long days and you, you, you get to enjoy that sun setting for, you know, an, an hour or an hour and a half or however long it takes for a sun to set, you know, and you don't, you don't get to enjoy that in the game at 5x speed because it's gone in five minutes. So I, I think that I will play for now. I'm going to experiment a little bit on 1x speed and then just fast forward when I am not doing anything. And then like when I have to take care of the sheep or do stuff like that, I will show you that. And I'll just fast forward off screen. But I mean, you don't have to worry about missing anything either way, because whenever I do anything on the map, I will show you. Oh, I just noticed that little screen material. That's pretty cool. Like a little, uh, it's like a little heat screen. That's, I didn't notice that before. That is neat. Anyway, these sheep are getting their feed on. We are out of here. We're getting our exit on. So I thank you guys for watching this little episode on the West Coast, and stay tuned for Friday for more from this story. I'm not sure where we'll be or what we'll be doing, but until then, thanks again, guys. Bye-bye.